Good afternoon and welcome to our annual stakeholders virtual event. We'd like to begin our program this afternoon with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome again, and thank you for taking time out of your day to be with us for our first virtual stakeholders event. We we're disappointed that we cannot be together in person, but felt it was important to continue on with a stream version of our event so we can say thank you. I'd like to offer a special welcome and a big thank you to the many investors who have tuned in today and for making your investment in Chester County economic development a priority. We could not accomplish everything we do throughout the year with your participation and support. We would also like to welcome the many partners and stakeholders who are with us today. It is our honor and privilege to work with you to serve Chester County every year, and we are so grateful for your partnership. Let me now shift to recognize the sponsors for our event today. Their generosity makes this event possible and allows us to share our story with you. First, our spotlight sponsor this year is RKL LLP. We have our platinum sponsors, Bentley and CTDI. Then our gold sponsors, Chester County Regional Education Services, or Seacrest, Cerner, Fisher Cunane and Associates, Riley, Riper, Holland, and Calagreco, and the Vanguard Group. Finally, our silver sponsors. I call your attention to the companies highlighted on the slides. We thank them for their support. I would also like to welcome my fellow commissioners, Josh Maxwell and Michelle Kickline, who have tuned in this afternoon. They are strong advocates for economic development and also serve as ex officio members of the Chester County Economic Development Board. Thank you for joining us today. I also want to take time to recognize a very special friend, colleague, and Chester County icon, Senator Andrew Dinneman. As many of you know, Andy is retiring at the end of the conclusion of his term. Andy has been an enthusiastic champion for economic development ever since he was elected as county commissioner in 1991. In his 14 years in the Pennsylvania Senate, Andy has been a key player driving economic development efforts evidenced by his passionate commitment to education and building the workforce for tomorrow and through his work cultivating new ideas and entrepreneurs by serving on the Ben Franklin Technology Development Authority. Andy has been a great partner and friend to the CCEDC, and he will be missed. In honor of Senator Dinneman's public service to Chester County, the CCEDC will make a contribution to Safe Harbor of Chester County in his honor. Here are a few words from Senator Dinneman. Hello, and it's good to be here. I want to thank the Economic Development Council for the honor they've given me in providing a charitable donation to a charity of my choice. And I ask that it be given to Safe Harbor because I helped establish Safe Harbor with other citizens when we had our people who couldn't make it, many who were veterans who were suffering in the courtyard of the courthouse and in the alleyways of Westchester. Today, Safe Harbor is very much part of our community. The given today is change, constant change, a rate of change that surpasses that of any generation in human history. And we as a county have demonstrated during this pandemic that we're prepared for change. We know how to operate. We are creative enough. We have the technology. And in doing so, we have shown that we will have the skills in the future. You know, for many places, it is their fate if they're hot to become cold. The way you stop that from happening is to understand what change is all about. In fact, the worst thing you can do is to assume what worked today will work tomorrow. It just isn't like that when change creates a whole paradigm shift. And the pandemic created that paradigm shift. This county responded to businesses, the citizens, the government, 
They use technology, they use creativity to keep us going. And that's exactly what's going to happen year after year. Not necessarily a pandemic, we hope and pray not, but the technological change is going to mean that we're going to have to adjust. And so today, uh, I want to thank the Economic Development Council. I want to thank uh, all who are here, the businesses of Chester County. And I'm deeply humbled to have been given the opportunity over almost 30 years to serve as your county commissioner and as your state senator. And I, the message I gave about change is the same message I gave in 1992. I think the county understands it, and that's going to be the basis of our success in the future. So thank you again and best wishes. Thank you, Senator. We give Andy our very best as he heads to retirement and thank him for his loyal service to our county for so many years. I am proud of the public-private partnership we enjoy in Chester County. We leaned on this model heavily this year as so many organizations, including the CCDC, work to respond to the economic crisis triggered by COVID-19. You will hear about some of that work today, but I would like to personally thank all those organizations for their dedication, passion, and teamwork. And one last group I'd like to acknowledge and thank is our board of directors. My colleagues on the board are thoughtful, generous, and engaged, and provide an invaluable foundation for the entire CCDC board. Thank you for all of your support and dedication to this fine organization. I call your attention to their names and organizations they represent on the screen. And next, I'd like to introduce Gary Smith, President and CEO of the Chester County Economic Development Council. Thank you. Thank you, Marion, for your kind introductory comments and remarks. And thank you, Senator Dinneman, for all the many, many years of public service you have expended to Chester County. You've been a treasure to our county, treasure to the citizens you represent, and most importantly, Andy, you've been a personal friend of mine. Over 40 years plus, Senator, we have been in various capacities in this county serving the citizens of this, these communities. Like you and I, we have an agricultural background. We like to grow things. We're good public stewards. We husband our, our commodities well, and you've been a very, very good friend of mine. So thank you so much, Andy, and, and thank you for, and, uh, for all those ser years of service and your friendship. Uh, wishing you Godspeed to you and your family and continued blessings upon you. I want to thank, most importantly, you, our listening audience. You're our friends, our advisors, our investors, and most importantly, my confidants. I have treasured our relationship with you, you may not know that individually, but collectively, and many of you have been with me for nearly 45 years that I have been in this position. Thank you so much for your dedicated service to this Development Council. Granted, our staff is a wonderful compliment that I enjoy coming to work, and that's why I come here every day with a fresh perspective and a lot of energy God's given me to see how we can become a catalytic change agent. How can we help people? How can we come better? How can we do things more efficiently, effectively? I've got a wonderful team here, and I'm going to share some opportunities to explain all that later t this morning for you. As we started this fiscal year, we look back with a lot of fondness. Things were great. Things were moving. Things were active. There was, a, there was a lot of economic prosperity moving forward. There were more job seeker, or jobs out there than we had people to fill positions. There was a lot of economic optimism in the county's economy. And times were good. And then all of a sudden, as we started to hear things afar, we watched and saw things on television, what was happening around the world and other parts of our country. We said, oh, hopefully this is going to die off and pass away. But unfortunately, it didn't. The first weekend in March, I remember I got a call from Bobby Cagle and said, Bobby said, within the next two hours, the governor is going to proclaim this pandemic and he's going to put a mandatory shutdown in Pennsylvania. Uh, that was a Saturday. And then all of a sudden on Sunday and Monday, and we started working just as any first responding organization would. But over that 
crisis that we saw this unforeseen enemy that invaded Pennsylvania, invaded Chester County, and we started hearing about reports of, of this horrible uh, pandemic that was coming and virus that was unseen and how do you catch it and how do you spread it? We were all panicked. Our personal lives, our business lives, we were all turned upside down. And how do we respond to something like that? Well, we're very fortunate here in Chester County and not just because she's my boss, but she's a very personal good friend too. Marian Mosevitz became a county commissioner. She also is the chairman of the Economic Development Council. She served over 10 or 12 years in the council. She worked her way up through the various chairs. Was, this was her term and her time. And she wanted to run because she's a giving person for public service in this county, became a county commissioner. We never had a county commissioner service chair of Chester County Economic Development Council. But under this time, it was in the wisdom of others, not us, that God put her here in the position to help us solve these crises. She was the right person at the right time. As the leader of the county government and also a leader of our organization, we forged this relationship. And under the, the support and, and obviously leadership of her colleagues, Josh Maxwell, Michelle Kickline, uh, along with the county administrator, Bobby Cagle, and all the other county department heads that have very responsible positions, we forged this working relationship that was sort of unsurpassed. Many counties around us did not have that kind of economic development partner, uh, which makes us a little unique. We've had this strong, strong relationship for 60 years in this county, working with the public officials. And we were honored to be called upon to do certain things. And under the crisis that we were faced with, we didn't know exactly how to respond. But working together, thinking logically, trying to be a resource for our business community, which is really where we are to help you, the business leaders of our county, the people that work for you and taking care of them and their, and our, and their, and their respective families, that was our mission. That was our job. Get them low interest loans, zero interest loans, get them grants, help you with workforce. When people are being laid off, where do they go? Who do they call? Putting people in touch with people was really the most important thing. And again, just listening with compassion, which is what I want to talk about. Our first responders who are out there working today with health care and other frontline workers during the pandemic. And a very special tribute I want to pay to our staff. Our board and myself and Mike Rigolonis, who's our chief operating officer and our, our leadership here and our management team, all want to reach out back to our staff and the people that work in the individual teams to make this organization so special. You were the folks that really made this difference. You came and picked up the phones. You were compassionate. We transitioned you from skill sets that you had no familiarity with to something become a production officer, to learn how to do loans, to do the things that were important to make a difference in someone's lives. You work seven days a week, 365 days here for this pandemic and, and 24 hours straight. It was unbelievable to see the volume. You were the envy of every other organization in Pennsylvania. No one ever got near the volume of activity that this organization put forth. I want to thank you so much as, as, as your executive officer here and the management team for stepping up hard when we asked upon you to do this special work and learn and to stretch yourself out beyond your comfort zone to do that and do it remotely. It was like you could go over and ask someone else to help you. So thank you so much for all that activity and leadership that you showed us in behalf of the organization organization. The next uh, transition here in Mike Realones will give you some reviews of some of the statistical performance the organization's had. We're going to have some other opportunities to share some reflective thought and give you a small sampling of some of the testimonials from people who benefit from some of the grants and the programs and assistance the organization paid forth. And hopefully that'll be an encouragement for some of you out there as well as we go through this morning's agenda. But let me point out a few items which I think is very critical to understand and to learn about some things that may not get the notoriety, that are important as I see the organization. Yes, we did grants, yes, we did loans, and you'll hear more about those, but there are some things you may not have heard. Last year alone, there was over 7,400 participants that participated and volunteered in various committees and activities and putting things out to help this organization and help the companies of Chester County in committee functions, working with the get, program, working with what's so cool about manufacturing, working with our youth academies, summer camps, working out there just to reach out to young people. There were 3,400 young people that were exposed to different career opportunities in Chester County, which is a tremendous uh, initiative that I find very heartening 
and want to thank the folks that have worked very hard in that organization and that department to create newness and create a real meaningfulness to help your children, your grandchildren reside here, go to educate, hopefully come back to Chester County, raise their families because the economic opportunities are wide and diverse. And that's what we work very hard here every day to maintain. I want to pull out another example of a program I'm very fond of is 40 Under 40. So uh, Ken Knickerbocker with Vista Today is a colleague of ours here who started a, a for-profit entity that we were very proud to become his founding partner. And through that initiative and working with Ken and telling the good news of Chester County every day like he does, and many of you see his, in your inboxes, there was an opportunity to really identify the rising stars, if you will, for Chester County, the Under 40 Club. And if we could find those young people that are in their, in their early to mid-careers that are trying to diversify themselves and network, I'm concerned just about like anyone else, we all sort of age through an organization and a lot of the peers that of their seniority have actually retired or moved on and then we lose the connectivity with a lot of these companies. We're making sure that that doesn't happen here. We have a culture of giving in Chester County, whether it's our organization and the multitude of 350 other not-for-profit organizations in this county who are adding value and flavor back into our community and making this a special quality of place of Chester County. We want to maintain all those economic opportunities for people. We want to make sure that that culture of giving and participation happens through all different avenues. And identifying these young people and networking and keeping them in place and, and listening to the millennial generation as far as what they need and what we need to do as an organization is very critical. And we want to let you know that we are working on that area as well. Another thing that was involved with, we touched projects out in West Sadsbury Township of CTDI. We're up and working on the redevelopment of Penhurst. That's a very critical part of the, of the county in northern and East Vincent Township. We work with diverse projects as far away as below the southernmost part of Chester County and Elk Township uh, working. So we are very diverse. Working, we have a program that we partner with the county called Economic Development Partners Initiative. We work with the urban centers, making sure that Pat Bakovitz and his organization, his department is, is interlinked with us on many different activities. So it's a real fondness we have there at an accomplishment. We're very proud to be part of that team as we work together. A couple other projects we worked on last year, it was a banner year for some of the financing projects that we worked with. We've touched over a thousand companies through, the, through this pandemic of working with low interest loans and grants and other assistance we've provided. And as I say, it's a real accomplishment to our staff to be able to do that. We are in our 60th year. For 60 years, as they say, you have been part of this organization. I've had the pleasure of being here. It'll be 45 years as of January, and I, and I thank the Lord for that, and I thank you for supporting me. I thank you for being part of the organization, because without you, we're nothing, and, and we cannot do that without your support. So I really want to thank you for that participation. I guess as we look forward to next year, we're going to say, what's out there? Certainly there's a lot of fear, there's concern, there's a change, there's transition times coming, there's all kinds of uncertainty. Nobody knows exactly what will happen in the future. And that's part of why we get up every morning with anticipation. And anticipation of coming into this building, coming in here and solving the problems of the day. You do that your respective daily challenge, whether you're running a business out of your garage or in a corporation or sitting in, in a C-level suite. You're doing the same thing because you have an opportunity to make a change. And that's what we're trying to do too. So thank you so much for all the activity and support over the years. But one thing I can assure you, God willing, we're going to be here for a long time. As long as you're with us, we're with you and you're part of this organization. So thank you on behalf of the council's board, thank you on behalf of the staff, and thank you so much for tuning in and listening, and uh, God bless you all, thank you. One thing before I go, I need to transition to my friend, our business development leader, Mary Frances McGarity, our senior vice president. Mary Frances. So this is the spotlight sponsor portion of our presentation today. And today we're speaking with Barry Palagotti, the partner of RKL here in Exton. Hi, Barry. Thanks for joining us today. Mary Francis, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So, Barry, tell us a little bit about you and RKL. With respect to myself, my story is pretty simple. Born and raised in Philadelphia, went to a small Catholic school in South Philadelphia, Roman Catholic High School, St. Joe's for college, and been doing counting my entire career. So 25 years in. About 15 years ago, my wife and I moved out to Chester County. We now have three daughters, 
and I've been with RKL for about two and a half years and it's been really beneficial to help and have my local ties um, help tie to the sense of community and the businesses that we work with. Excellent. Well, I know that you came into Exxon. You said about you joined about two and a half years ago and you came to Exxon about two and a half years ago. What have been some of your challenges that you've been facing in Exton and, and perhaps some of the things that you're most proud of? Well, I'd say that our success has really been investing in the communities and letting them know we're here and helping us to establish brand recognition. If we go out to Central PA where we're headquartered and where we were founded, most people know RKL. But in the southeastern Pennsylvania area, it's really been about them getting to know us and that we can add a lot of value. And we have 425 professionals that really are here to help them solve their problems and achieve their strategic initiatives. So, you know, there's a number of accounting and, and tax audit firms and, and people like to know, like, you know, something about what's behind the, you know, what, what's the secret sauce. Right. So what is the differentiator for RKL? Well, having worked at several different accounting firms in my career, I would say that the differentiator or our secret sauce is really our commitment to community. That means a lot of different things to us within RKL beginning with our team members and those that we hire, whether it be out of school or from other organizations, and also with our clients and potential clients and letting them know that we are here to bring all of our depth of service and expertise to them, try and solve their problems, and again, hopefully help them achieve their plans while at the same time helping RKL attain success in a new market to us. So once COVID hit, RKL jumped in to deploy 25 webinar sessions called Adapt and Recover. Talk to me a little bit about that and how impactful those sessions were. With respect to Adapt and Recovery, we really started from day one saying that our focus was a commitment to community again. So we took sort of our, our core values and we said we need to let organizations know that this is an unprecedented time we're living in and if they have questions, we want to try and provide answers to the best of our ability. So even though there were questions with many that were unanswerable at the time, we let everyone know what the perspective was and that if things changed, they could check back in with us weekly. We would keep them up to date and if they had questions in between, they could reach out to us. We would get back to them and help them figure out the next steps and them navigating through the process. And these, these webinars are going to be ongoing. Our next one is November 6th. Anyone's welcome to join through rklcpa.com and we would hope to have our highest numbers ever as we continue throughout the rest of the year. So was that a moment of pride for you? I mean, how did, how did that make you feel about the organization? Um, I think the pride still, again, I know I'm being somewhat redundant, but with respect to just that commitment to our people, to our team, to our clients, and to the communities, letting them know that we don't plan on going anywhere, that we know that this is a very trying time for everyone, and that if they pick up the phone and if they call us, we will try and help. We will try and get them the answers. We will try and point them in the right direction. And we will try and help them sleep better at night. That's really what our focus is going to continue to be for the foreseeable future. Well, we're glad that RKL is in our community, Barry. And we thank you for your leading the charge and for helping these businesses get the information that they need. Great. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mary Francis, and thank you, RKL, for being our Spotlight sponsor for this day's event. We certainly appreciate your support when you continue success in Chester County as you grow your business here. So thank you so much for being with us uh, this afternoon. It's my pleasure right now to introduce Mike Rigalonis, who is our Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer and has been with our organization for 22 years and a friend of mine, Mike. Okay, thank you, Gary, and thank you to all of our investors out there and all of our stakeholders who are with us today to celebrate our annual stakeholders event. We're thankful for you obviously being with us today, but even more importantly, your investment in our organization over the course of the year, your participation, your engagement in everything that we do. We could not achieve the outcomes, some of which we're gonna share with you today. We could not achieve those outcomes without your support. So we really thank you and are grateful for everything that you do for us. I also, before I get into the annual review and some of the highlights from the year, I really want to start at the top by thanking our staff. There was a lot asked of our staff this year. There was a lot demanded of them. They were asked to do things that they've really never done before in many cases, 
and they responded in a way that I could never have imagined. They responded with enthusiasm and compassion and empathy for the many companies, the many individuals that came to us in desperate times where their business were, were hanging on the edge. They were desperate for capital. They were desperate to try to find that next opportunity. And our staff responded to a person in a way that I could not be more proud. So thank you right from the top. I want to make sure we give proper recognition and thank you to our staff. So with that, let me transition to talk about some of our highlights. And, and where I'd like to start, with, as I do each year, is to really unveil our annual review. Our annual review, as it has been now for a few years, is primarily online. We have found that to be very effective for us. It allows us to be more innovative and interactive. We can do some videos. We can have some animation to some of the graphics that we're, we're putting out there. So the online format uh, is something we've adopted. It's live now. So if you're sitting at your desk or at your home office, uh, take some time to kind of click through it and see what you can take from it. Hopefully there's some interesting tidbits in there, maybe things you didn't know that we did or accomplished. So that is live now at our website, ccedcpa.com. Along with that, we also have a hard copy print companion piece. This has some similar information pr presented in a little bit of a different format, uh, but I think equally effective and, and equally well done. Um, so take a look at that. We normally would have this at your seats when you join us for breakfast. Today we're gonna to switch that up a little bit since we can't be together in person. We are going to actually mail them to you. So look for those in the mail. They'll be coming in the next week or two. Uh, you'll get a hard copy version. We're gonna send one to all of our investors and some key stakeholders. So take a look at that. We've incorporated some testimonials and some nice infographics into this piece as well. So we hope you'll take a few minutes to check out our, our uh, hard copy companion piece. Let me uh, give a shout out to the folks that were really responsible for pulling this together. From our staff, it was Leslie Rilke and Mary Beth DiVincenzo. Uh, they do a good job herding all of us cats here at CCEDC and pulling this information together. So uh, I, I know it's difficult and you have to track us down. So we thank you for, for the great work and the end product that looks fantastic. We also thank our partners in this, Joe Warner from 2010 Solutions. Joe's been with us for many years. Uh, and oftentimes donates much of his work and does this at a very reasonable price. So Joe, we appreciate your partnership and support. And lastly, I wanna thank Dave Spinelli. Dave Spinelli is of course with ANRO Printing and Dave is really our first ever investor here at CCEDC and he's been with us since that program was launched in 2004. And so David, not for just for 15 years, but also for uh, printing the companion piece, which I know you do at cost, or actually for free, I shouldn't say at cost. So David, thank you very much for many, many years of partnership. So let me just talk about our four core services. I'll give you a few highlights from each of those four core, core services, and then I'll turn it over to Mary Francis, who will give you a few testimonials and interviews with some of our uh, companies and individuals that we work with over the course of the past year. Starting with our financing solutions, we had a banner year for our Seedco team, our loan team. Uh, starting with the SBA, they had volume to the levels which we haven't seen really in 10 plus years. Um, they had over 30, I think it was 34 SBA loans for a total of $31.4 million. We haven't seen those levels since 2011, I believe. Uh, but on top of that, not only did they achieve all those SBA accomplishments, they also, and this was really a full staff uh, activity, the CWCA program, that was the first program, COVID Working Capital Access, that was the first program to come out really at the height of the, the business shutdown and the pandemic. And businesses at that time, if you think back, were just desperate for working capital. And uh, that was the first program that the state put out. And so we were very aggressive in trying to promote that opportunity to our businesses. And we did that I think exceedingly well. We, we uh, achieved uh, 98 loans were closed ultimately at the end of that process. That was far and away the highest of any county in the state. So we were really proud uh, to do that. We engaged every single one of our staff members, many of which had never worked on a loan before. So we did a really quick training. As I said earlier, the staff jumped right in, didn't ask any questions and did whatever they could do to help. So it was really one of the more prideful things that I've been involved with in my 20 plus years here at CCEDC. Uh, but we also, we didn't stop there. We transitioned to the PPP program, which you all know about by now, the Paycheck Protection Program. Our seed code team was really focused on that for a number of months, supporting six of our partner banks 
to get a total of almost 560 applications submitted to the SBA and ultimately funded. That totaled over $58 million of critical capital uh, for many small businesses uh, in our county. And then lastly, we were proud to partner with our county, our county commissioners, and some of the leadership there to design and implement uh, the business preservation grant, the Main Street Business Preservation Grant. That was uh, put, put forth in the springtime, again, at a time of critical need for many of the small businesses in our community. We processed over 700 applications and ultimately awarded grants to 248 small businesses uh, in Chester County. And so that was, a, again, a project where we involved our entire, sta entire staff in trying to process and collect all this information that we needed to make what we hope are informed decisions and, and the right grants uh, to, again, to the many small businesses in Chester County. So uh, all of that to say it was a very, very busy year on the financing and grant side of our, of our organization and um, you know, really, really proud, again, of the team and, and the effort put forth there. We continued, of course, to focus on the, the uh, economic development, the traditional economic development, the real estate and the location services that we offer here at CCEDC. There's a map here that you can see that shows the many projects represented by dots of where we're involved and you can see they're spread throughout the county and they take on different forms. Sometimes it's helping to secure funding perhaps to install infrastructure. Sometimes it's a collaborative marketing effort per, for a corridor or some key sites that we're trying to promote or a community is trying to promote. So it takes different shapes and sizes depending on what the needs are. And then we did have two projects where we continue to invest a lot of our time and energy. We think they're important projects and we think they can really be transformative for the county and for the communities where these projects are located. Cheney University, of course, and the, the reimagination that's happening there with the university, with the Mosaic Group, we're integrally involved in that reimagination and, and proud to be so. And Penhurst is another project up in the northern part of our county. Uh, this is a redevelopment project, an old, of course, state hospital that's been uh, underutilized over the many years, and we're meeting weekly to try to to try to revitalize that project, whether that's be trying to help improve the access, helping with demolition, and the many things that go into transforming and revitalizing a site. Uh, let me transition to workforce development. Of course, a critical service that we offer here, particularly now as we struggle with really record high unemployment rates here in the county, but we continue to make this a priority at CCEDC whether we're working with our youth and trying to educate them about the opportunities that exist here in Chester County, working with some of the folks that might be in transition, might be looking for that next opportunity. We're engaged really from the youth all the way up through the transitioning worker. And you know, you can see by some of the numbers, we have thousands of people involved, thousands of volunteers involved. Uh, and this will remain a priority as we move into future years here at CCEDC. And lastly, I'd like to finish by talking a little bit about our innovation culture, our program we call I2N, Ideas Times Innovation Network. This is a program focused on trying to nurture our technology entrepreneurs, whether they be in IT or life science or renewable energy or whatever it might be. And we have focused recently, we've always worked hard to make sure that companies have access to tax credits and have access to angel investors and VC investors, and they have access to co-working spaces. But this year we've added something that I'm really excited about, and that is these entrepreneurial roundtables. These are forums that we've created that allows entrepreneurs to come together and share and talk about their business concepts and then critique each other and help each other and think through some concepts and different ways maybe to communicate ideas that they have or better ways to pitch their product or their service. And that's the energy in those rooms is really, really special. And I'm, I'm excited to see what happens in the future with those because I think there's really something to build on there. And then something similar is something we call open coaching. This was done in collaboration with the Kutztown University Small Business Development Center. And that's a similar concept to our roundtables, except in this case, we, we pick one particular company and they're kind of in the spotlight and they give their pitch to the audience, which is, which is fellow entrepreneurs as well as this coach who's an expert in trying to position these companies and these pitches in front of venture or angel investors. And so it's an iterative process where they make the pitch and there's feedback from their peers, from these coaches. And that's, again, really great energy. We've already heard some great success stories of how they've taken that feedback and really advanced it and improved their pitch moving forward. So exciting things happening, I think, with all of our, uh, all of our services. Uh, we've got certainly more, much more work ahead of us uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention our involvement in Restore Chester County. 
Uh, I know others have mentioned it, but I, I do know that's a big part of our work. It will be a big part of our work moving forward, working with the many partners who are helping to try to restore Chester County, not just in the short term, but also envisioning the long term and what the opportunities are that lie ahead of us for the long term as we consider a post-COVID world what are the opportunities and, and how can Chester County and how will Chester County compete in a post-COVID economy? So with all of that, I'd like to transition over to Mary Frances McGarity. As I said earlier, she's gonna take us through some testimonials and some interviews with some of the key folks that we work with and companies that we worked with uh, for uh, successful projects that we implemented this year. So thank you very much. Today we're speaking with C.J. Witherspoon, the owner and proprietor of Three Spoons LLC, a boutique videography company located in Downingtown. Hey C.J., thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Mary Fran. Terrific. Tell us a little bit about how Three Spoons LLC was formed. The name Three Spoons LLC comes from my last name, which is Witherspoon. The three in Three Spoons stands for my daughter, Lila, my wife, Hallie, and myself. Since this is a family-run business, we treat everybody that we work with as if they're a part of our family, because that's truly how we feel. I want to treat everyone that we work with with the utmost respect and give them 110% of everything that I can with every project that we have. The County of Chester provided the Main Street Preservation Grant to supply relief to small businesses who were hit during the pandemic, COVID-19. How did Three Spoons LLC weather COVID-19? In January of this year, our revenue stream was projected to be the highest to date. Unfortunately, COVID hit and all of the projects that we had lined up for the year were either postponed or canceled. At that point, we didn't know what we were gonna do. And thankfully, the County of Chester created this grant program and through the CCEDC, we were able to receive it and they walked us through the entire process. Receiving the Main Street grant helped tremendously. Not only did it help cover business and payroll expenses, but it also allowed me to lay my head on the bed at night knowing that my family is gonna be okay. And that right there is worth its weight in gold. So how does the future look for Three Spoons LLC? Now we're in Q4 and business is coming back to life. We have projects that are ongoing. We have projects booked into next year. I cannot thank the County of Chester enough for allowing me to be a recipient of Main Street Preservation Grant. I'm so glad that things are moving along for you, CJ, and we really wish you luck in 2021. Thank you. Stay with us as we head out to Jennersville Hospital to speak to Claire Mooney, the President and CEO of Jennersville Hospital Tower Health. Chester County Economic Development Council, we focus our efforts on four key areas, location services, workforce development, financing, and innovation. We focus these efforts in five key industry partnerships, agriculture, manufacturing, IT and technology, energy, and healthcare. We're here today with Claire Mooney, President and CEO of Jennersville Hospital Tower Health. Hello, Claire, how are you today? Hi, Mary Frances. Great. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. Tell us a little bit about things happening here at Jennersville Hospital and how you have been dealing with uh, the COVID crisis. So here at Jennersville Hospital, we've really taken a system approach to what we've done to not only make sure that our patients are aware of our reopening process, but also to educate and make sure that our staff are aware of what we're doing, not only in the community, but what we're doing right here inside Jennersville Hospital. We've done a number of things in terms of patient, visitor, and staff screening. We've in instituted innovations such as the Thor robot, and we've also made transparent our data on our website. For those who don't know who are joining us today, Claire, can you please talk about Healthcare Connect and how it helps you here at Jennersville Hospital? 
So through our our through the region, we really did become first initially involved with the Chester County Economic Development Council through the partnership and the innovators. So we met through the innovators, and then once I joined one of the meetings, then pretty quickly I was asked to be the chair of the Healthcare Connect Council. So it's been quite a, an extraordinary two years. So what changes or trends do you expect will continue as a result of COVID-19? So I think one of the things that's definitely here to stay is the telehealth platform. Here at Tower Health, we certainly brought telehealth into patients' homes during the pandemic in order to keep them safe. Our primary care providers, our specialists, quickly switched to our telehealth platform. In terms of bringing other innovation here, we brought the Thor robot. And I think another thing that's definitely here to stay as an industry is looking at the way we are transparent in our data and, and delivering safe, effective care. So what's the future for the healthcare industry and for Jennersville Hospital? So I think in looking at what's ahead, one of the things that all healthcare organizations are struggling with right now is this unpredictable recovery phase. As we look to the horizon, certainly here at Jennersville, we have welcomed services that we didn't even have here a year ago, as we welcome pulmonology services and behavioral health services. So I think there's a lot of great things on the horizon here at Jennersville and with Tower Health. Thanks so much for joining us today, Claire. We are really happy to have learned so much about what's going on here at Jennersville Hospital. Join us now as we move to Phoenixville to visit with Home Furnishing Smart, and we're off to Phoenixville. We're here at the Home Furnishings Market in Phoenixville, Pennsylvania. Joining me is Mike Holmes, the owner and proprietor, as well as Sherwood Robbins, the director of Seedco Pennsylvania. Sherwood, for those who are joining us today virtually, please tell us a little bit about Seedco and what you do and how you're related to the Chester County Economic Development Council. Sure. Thanks, Mary Francis. Definitely appreciate being here. Hi, Sherwood Robbins, managing director at Seedco PA. And think of Seedco PA as a commercial lender, but we're economic development minded. So 37 years ago, Seedco was formed as a direct affiliate of Chester County Economic Development Council. And really what our job is to work with borrowers just like Mike, go out with federal, state, and loan program opportunities, offering up such benefits such as uh, reduced money out of pocket, longer term fixed interest rates, benefits for the structure of the program, but really working with them to benefit the borrower and the business to be able to establish, grow, and expand well into the future. So Mike, tell us a little bit about Home Furnishings Market and how you got your business started. Thank you. Yes, I started working here approximately 30 years ago and uh, we just started from a very small little showroom with a very small little amount of furniture, really not even knowing that much about it. Over 30 years of experience and tons of people working with and, and friends and family uh, working with the community, uh, I moved out and had an opportunity to move back here and I couldn't tell you how happy I am to be back here with the entire space and the entire showroom ready to go. So Mike, how did you learn? How did you come to know about Seco and, and what their services were? I came to know about Seco when, I, when the opportunity for the building came up for sale. I used to rent it from the owner, previous owner, and he indicated he was going through Seco. So as an opportunity to buy the building, uh, the only way I could afford the building, because commercially you need to put 20% down, and I was only coming up with about 10% equity. So it was an idea to go through Seco in order for me to be able to finance a building that I used to rent 30 years ago. It was the only opportunity I had to be able to, to, to own this building and create another opportunity for the next generation of uh, my family doing this business. And so then, how has the business benefited from the services you received from Seedco? Well, now that we were able to afford to buy this building through the help of Seedco, the future for our business here is actually, it's the very beginning now, because my son's on board. He's uh, working with us. He has a son. My, my niece works for me. The people that work for me for the last 10 to 15 years love this new location. 
They love the fact that uh, it, it's just a bright location. The parking's great. We have air conditioning. We have heat. All these little things you take for granted. We, we can afford to have a beautiful showroom. So the future for us is bright. It was never brighter, actually. Um, so we look forward to uh, being in business a very, very long time. Well, we're really glad that you're here in Phoenixville, and thanks so much for joining us today, Mike. We appreciate it. Good luck with the rest with the, your business now that you're here, and, and good luck. Thanks for coming Congrats, out, guys. Mike. Thanks again. Thank you. It was great. So now we're on our way, headed out to talk to our new tech company out in Exton, Pennsylvania. I'll see you soon. Today, joining me to talk about innovation is Joe Rashar, founder and CEO of Ike AI which is a software firm specializing in AI and augmented enterprise systems, as well as Patrick Hayakawa, the Vice President of Innovation and Early Stage Technology. For those of you who are joining us virtually and don't know what the Ideas Times Innovation or I2N network is, Patrick, would you please share with us a little bit about what I2N does here at CCEDC? The Ideas Times Innovation Network is an initiative of the Chester County Economic Development Council. Our mission at I2N is simply to make our region the best possible place for early stage and technology driven companies to start, to grow, and to thrive. That means through the work of our board, our volunteers, our staff, the companies that we work with, we're working to make sure that entrepreneurs have access to early stage funding, workspace, key connections, mentorship, guidance, their first customers, all the things they, that they need to go from an idea to forming a company to becoming a commercially viable enterprise right here in Chester County. Terrific. So Joe, tell us a little bit about Ike AI and how you came to be founded. Just out of high school, I had a deep interest in languages and I started studying natural language understanding and as a lieutenant in the Army Intelligence Corps, I served in Japan and I speak Japanese and during that time I attended Tokyo Institute of Technology and started to work on the problem of fully automated language understanding and translation. And I learned that in order to really be able to outperform systems that exist today, we would need to have a system that understands as much as you do about the real world. And so we began building this massive knowledge base and uh, that's how the company was founded. What a fascinating background. So how did you end up here in Chester County? About four years ago, I was recruited by Click to come to Pennsylvania and serve as an enterprise architect. I spent a lot of my career as an enterprise architect learning what businesses need to do to uh, get business value out of their computing systems. And this has helped me to understand how I can augment their systems with our intelligent systems to uh, be able to deliver significant business values. So how did you become introduced to Patrick and the Ideas Times Innovation Network? One of our advisors, Lynn Solomon, uh, introduced us to Patrick and the I2N uh, network so that we could help get help in establishing our business here in Chester County. Joe, what is the future for Ike AI? We're in the process of raising $500,000 to get us to the next stage. And we're working with Ben Franklin Technology Partners and others in the area. We're uh, establishing relationships and a lot of the I2N introductions have been really helpful for us. We feel that 2021 is gonna be our breakout year and we will be able to have our, a successful go to market and uh, a lot of it is thanks to the help that we've been getting from Patrick and the I2N. This is just a fascinating business model. As far as I'm concerned, Joe, I think that you're going to kill it, and we're so glad that you're located here in Chester County. Thanks so much for joining us today to talk about innovation. Thank you, Mary Fran. You're welcome. At the Chester County Economic Development Council, our organization's mission is to provide community and economic development services, and we've been doing that successfully for 60 years. But this year, COVID-19 struck, bringing with it unprecedented business, institutional, and personal challenges. At CCEDC, though, our staff jumped in to valiantly deploy services for the state's COVID Working Capital Loan Program, as well as Chester County's Main Street Preservation Grant. You see, these might have been businesses that were looking for help, but to us, they were people, people who live right here in our own community. Together, we were able to help hundreds of businesses receive the, the, the resources that they so desperately needed. 
But we would not have been able to do that without your support, our stakeholders watching us today. So my colleagues and I here at CCEDC, we send out a huge warm thank you to you for supporting our efforts this year, and most especially for helping our community. Well, you've heard this afternoon many of the testimonials support the commentary given by so many people why this organization matters. But as I said earlier in my opening commentary, we matter because you matter. You are the reason we're here. We are here to be of service to you. And in turn, you serve us. You give us your time, your talent, your financial resources. You invest in this organization, not necessarily for what you can get back in return, but what we can get back together in return for this county's economy. We will be looking and reviewing where we are strategically long term. How do we heal this economy? How do we cure the, the wrongs? How do we make sure that we get prepared for the unknowns of the future? We will be doing that through strategic planning, bringing other people together and listening to people who will build this county's economy together. So it's with you and your continued support and your beliefs and convictions will keep this county as strong as it is. So thank you so much for your participation. Thank you for, for listening and God bless you all. Thank you for attending.